Hello world, this is Lockpicking Dev. Today we're going to talk about how to make multi-dong handles for multi-pick tips. And that is basically an honest dong she handle. These good old classic uh, dimple handles. You can take their their flags and sand them down to look nice like this, but they come very bulky and very thick. But you take the handle and you make it work with a typical classic multi-pick tip and it ends up looking like this. Very comfortable and has the uh, knurl on the sides and all, a nice thickness and all. And so what we need is an honest dong handle, we need our multi-pick flag, our uh, brass bar that we use that is about five millimeters thick in diameter and uh, we need uh, some epoxy and we need a drill press and a lathe and also some grub screws if you decide to uh, grub it like I did which I highly recommend. So the way we start is we take our brass rod, we stick it inside here, we just need it sticking out a little bit. So if we compare these two you can see the top one I actually took it down a little bit over the uh, handle here to smooth it out and I'll show you why. So we put that in here, and next thing we're going to do is we align, we uh, take a fine tip felt marker here, and we mark the hole in here. Make it nice and dark, mark it. We can see right there's our mark. And what we're going to do is drill that, the diameter of this hole right here, if not just a little bit larger, drill a hole about a third the way into this rod here. The reason being, we're going to stick it back in. That hole will line up right there and the old screw that we have in here that we have out right now we're going to actually put that back in and this will fit and uh, affix into that hole there to help hold this brass rod uh, a little bit more sturdy so yeah we will drill that hole and then after we drill that hole basically it's we don't have a whole lot to do we glue this in we make sure that that new hole that we just drilled is perfectly aligned there we epoxy glue it in and we take some more epoxy and we stick it in the end of our uh, screw right here and we screw that in here and that's how we affix our brass rod and keep it nice and snug in there and this helps too because it keeps any tension off of all that glue or helps keep tension off all that glue so it holds this more securely so that's why I recommend taking the old screw and doing this with it and then tapping your own new screw hole there that way it stays more stable so I will be back I will uh, drill the hole in here and I'll show you the gluing process all right we got our little hole drilled into our pin here to go into the tip and so what we do now is we stick it in we try to align that hole doing not the best job of focusing as you can see there is the hole right there and then we take our screw and we screw it in just like we have right here and we want to do a little test too so after we have it screwed in take a pair of pliers and just give it a little tug and make sure it's nice and snug in there that little tug ensures that and shows that this will stay in here by that screw alone and so when we're adding pressure on this later when we're turning it and also as we're picking as well it's not just the glue holding this in place it's the screw so we have extra reinforcement and strength there and so I'll be back and so yeah when we're gluing what we'll do is I'll just fill the top part here just full of glue and I'll also fill this hole I will push this all the way down sometimes the uh, air bubbles will make a push back up so hold it down screw your screw in there like right here and just let it dry if there's any excess on the outside we'll wipe it off all right, we have our holes ready and we have our, our epoxy ready and mixed up. So again, what we want to do is we want to get our epoxy here and get it down in the main chamber hole up here. That's more than enough because it's kind of a tight fit so some of it will squeeze out and then also right here in the side hole where we're going to put our screw back in. There we go. <clears throat> and again, that's more than enough. And actually what I should have done is push this in, made sure the hole was aligned first before I put it in the side hole because now it's a little bit harder to see. Okay, I can see through it. There we go. 
I think that's it right there. Yeah, I think that's it right there. So we're going to go ahead and screw our screw in now. And we want to give it a little yank test to make sure that we are nice and secure and snug and that our screw is in the hole. So grab a pair of pliers in the end, try to pull it. There we go. So there we go. We are good to go. It is glued, ready to go. We just wait for it to dry, then we start turning it. One thing you could do is actually make this tip a little bit more cone shaped before this point, just to save a little heat later as we're turning it so it doesn't affect the glue. But um, I don't think it really matters because yeah, we have that screw there. So next we will turn it and yeah, all we're doing now is putting it in our lathe and turning it till it looks like that. Till we have the shape that we are looking for. So you will go down on the handle a little bit and you can take off the screw right there just like I did right there if you'd like. Um, I'd recommend it because we're going to put another screw in later. All right, now that they're glued, I started sanding them down a little bit. So this is the part where we're getting it down to shape. So all I did is I ran a belt sander and I just kind of sanded it down that way around. I probably do it a little bit more, get it a little bit closer to shape and all the way, and then I'll finish it up on my, um, my lathe. Okay, so this is what I mean by getting a little bit more closer to shape on my uh, belt sander before I, uh, before I turn them. I just do just the, the, to try to reduce the amount of stress as much as possible and I do it just very little at a time so it doesn't heat up. So you can see it's very close and then also that way the shape's already kind of formed and my lathe ain't hitting like weird bumps and stuff so it's nice and smooth for my lathe to travel with. And so I will finish the rest of it off on the lathe to get it looking like this. Now for the lathe work. So uh, this one's already done, but we would typically, if we sanded it up a little bit ourselves, just get that little pre-grind there, we'd have somewhat of a shape. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna clamp it inside of our, uh, our chuck uh, right here. And that way it's nice and smooth throughout. And one thing I do, um, and these chuck jaws will fit perfectly in that area right there. One thing I do as well, and some people might hate me for this, is I uh, put this little uh, yoga mat right there that I can clamp onto that. That way it doesn't ruin the paint or anything. And I do the yoga mat because yoga mat is typically very grippy. So I'm not too worried about slippage with it. And then I just tighten it really tight just to make sure it's nice and tight. And you don't have to wrench it on there, but just make sure it's nice and tight. And it still won't ruin the paint, but I'll make sure it's nice on there. And then on our other end here, we have a 1 16th of an inch um, drill bit. That is for the tip where our flag goes in. And then so what I used to um, do this with is a carbide tip on a... Um, a turner uh, tool right here and that seemed to work really well um, but honestly you may not even really need to use this because you're turning metal by hand so that creates a lot of chatter that's notoriously kind of really hard to do so that's your warning there I'm not going to give you any more any tips on how to do that you have to find it out yourself but I think most of us can actually just use a really high grit sandpaper like 60 grit right here and since we already have most of the shape done uh, with our um, with our uh, belt sander or sanding beforehand, this will finish it up really well. If you didn't do that, then yes, you'll probably have to go to some sort of um, tool like this. But yeah, after we're uh, done um, turning it, we get our general shape right here. We can then drill the end in, uh, finish up polishing it, go through some grits here of different nice fine sandpapers, take it up to a thousand or who knows how far you wanna make it look nice and finish it up that way. And actually I would only take it up to about 400 or so because after that, we're gonna go drill our side hole here for the retaining screw. And that'll actually need a little bit of sanding afterwards if you want it to be nice and perfect. So let's go to the side hole now for our screw. The hole for the retaining screw for multi-picks, uh, the way I do it is about 7.5 millimeters from the top. You just measure it with a ruler, find that little mark, make the mark because it only matters on the depth. Um, if you want the pick sticking out just a little bit more, you can make it about 7, 6.5. You can see how these ones, even from the tip, the screws aren't quite aligned. Mine's just a little bit deeper, so that's up to you. Um, I like it about 7.5 or 7, just so that little rounded off part, and then it starts sticking out the tip. And so to drill this here, that is a, um, 
I don't have the exact same screws as multi-pick, I don't think. I did um, uh, three millimeter grub screws just because I had a ton of them already. And so you'll have to do the math on that with what drill bit and what grub screws you use. If you don't want to use grub screws, you can always take a, um, a bolt and cut that down and use a bolt on the side of that as well. And so for my grub screws, I need a 2.5 millimeter drill bit. And to line this up, I just put it in a vise. And really, you just can kind of eyeball it. You really don't need it to be absolutely to the micron perfect. You can just kind of eyeball it. Just make sure you take your time to eyeball it. That way when you're going down, it is pretty solid to go straight right there to line up with our, our pick hole right there. And that way when we're done, you'll actually hear this go through and set into that hole. That's how you know you've drilled far enough. And then you can take that out after, or you can take the pick out right here. So we're gonna do that. And the next part is to tap it right there. All right, just to show you the tap I use, there is it, or there it is, the M3 by 0 0.5 high-speed steel. You can see mine's dirty, keep yours cleaner. I also use a 2.5 millimeter drill bit um, cobalt uh, for metal. And then, so at the end here, here are um, M3 by four millimeter uh, grub screws. And grub screws are just these little tiny screws right here that basically fit, they have a hole in the top that fit a hex wrench like that. And so we have um, our top tapped. So we will insert the pick there. When we insert our pick, sometimes it might take a little bit of wiggling to get in the first time or just take your drill bit and kind of make sure it's cleaned out really well before sticking it in there. And let's see if we can get that looking in there. So right there you can see that darkness is that little slot that we're looking for. So if I turn it to the side more, you can see a little bit of that shininess. That's not the slot, so we turn it back. There it is. There's our slot for the retaining screw to fit in. And then... There we go. There is our multi-dong pick. So one other last thing that you can do when you're done is uh, after drilling this pinhole right here, the retaining pinhole, sometimes a little metal sticking up there, you can always go back and finish it off and make it perfectly smooth. But uh, to me, I'm just not gonna waste the time. Uh, either way, um, we took uh, some uh, notoriously cheap picks and combined them with some really high-end, uh, what I consider high-end pick tips and made ourselves a uh, rejuvenated and useful pick again. Alright everyone, thanks for watching.